Mandela Effect is when a large group of people remember something differently than it is now. And today, I'm finally answering the question, what caused the Mandela Effect? This has been a debate for years and years with many compelling arguments. There are 12 explanations I've come up with, each one diving into a different explanation for what caused the Mandela Effect. Everything from time travel to CERN to bad memory and beyond. Today, we're talking about quantum theory. This one is going to get complex, but I'm going to do my best to make it make sense. You see, at the quantum level, particles behave in ways that defy conventional thinking and understanding. The principles of quantum superposition and entanglement suggest that all possibilities exist simultaneously until observed. Meaning your reality as well as my reality might just both exist. It's a strange concept, but elements of quantum theory actually back this up. To understand this concept better, we need to understand both objective reality and subjective reality. In the simplest terms, objective reality is the way things are, without any person's thoughts or feelings affecting it. It is the truth, whether people know it or believe it. Then there is subjective reality, and that is how people see things based on their own thoughts and feelings. So when we speak of objective reality, we all agree that this is the truth. This is how something is. But what if it isn't? The big deal with the Mandela Effect is that the truth sometimes seems to not be so clear-cut. While a ton of people might remember one thing being one way, in reality, that thing is actually something else. The clash between these things is what makes the Mandela Effect so fascinating and so confusing. So what if objective reality wasn't actually objective? There has been a hypothesis regarding this very idea for decades. Originally proposed by the Nobel Prize winning physicist Eugene Wigner. You see, back in 1961, he outlined a thought experiment that demonstrated one of the lesser known paradoxes of quantum mechanics. The experiment, known as Wigner's Friend, is a thought experiment in quantum mechanics that raises questions about the nature of reality and the observer's role in it. The thought experiment goes as follows. Wigner has a friend who performs an experiment measuring the spin of an electron. In this thought experiment, Wigner is outside of the lab and doesn't know the outcome of the experiment. From Wigner's point of view, the electron is in a superposition of spin states, meaning the electron is both up and down, until his friend takes the measurements and collapses the wave function. However, from his friend's point of view, the electron had a definite spin from the moment the measurement was made. Totally simple, right? This thought experiment illustrates the idea of observer-dependent reality, where the state of a physical system can change depending on the observer and the act of measurement. This obviously raises questions regarding the relationship between consciousness and physical reality. Both Wigner and his friend observed the same electron, but each one had different descriptions of that electron based on their proximity and role. Now, this raises questions regarding the relationship between consciousness and physical reality. Both Wigner and his friend observed the same electron, but each had different descriptions of that electron based on their proximity and role. This thought experiment raises questions about how we see reality, and whether or not there is one reality or different realities depending on who is observing it. It also questions the role of consciousness in shaping our understanding of the physical world. All of that to explain that this was just a thought experiment and nothing more. Until 2018, when humanity finally had the capability to actually try out this experiment. And guess what? Wigner was right. His hypothesis suggested that there is no objective reality. And as usual, this sounds pretty out there, but this concept has been suspected for a long time by physicists, that quantum mechanics allow two observers to experience different, conflicting realities, and this modern experiment proved it. It was conducted for the first time at the Harriet Watt University in Edinburgh. The experiment resulted in creating different realities to different observers, then comparing them. Their conclusion was that Wigner was correct. Get this, these realities can be made irreconcilable, so that it is impossible to agree on objective facts about an experiment. The Mandela Effect could be a reflection of the ongoing debate between objective and subjective reality. Experiments such as Wigner's friend have led some scientists to believe that there is no single objective reality, only multiple subjective experiences. Meaning reality is, well, kind of what you make it. Could it be that timelines themselves are subjective and as our collective consciousness evolves, our timelines change to match new perspectives? If reality is not fixed, but rather in a constantly shifting patchwork of individual perceptions, then it makes sense that different people might remember different versions of history. It's a truly mind-blowing concept to consider. I don't know about you, but my mind is blown. Absolutely incredible stuff. This means reality isn't always as clear-cut as we have imagined and speculated it to be. It's possible that the correct answer to one perspective is not always the correct answer to another. So is it possible that objective reality not actually being objective might be the cause of the Mandela Effect? 
Perhaps this alternative view that so many people have suffered from isn't actually just millions of people being wrong about millions of things, it's that what they saw, or heard, actually was different. It's truly a fascinating thought, perhaps too fascinating. The experiment produced an unambiguous result. It turns out that both realities can coexist even though they produce irreconcilable outcomes, just as Wigner predicted, which raises some fascinating questions that are now forcing physicists to reconsider the nature of reality. The idea of objective reality relies on three assumptions. Agreeable reality, freedom of choice, locality. Uh, what does any of that mean? Let me explain. That universal facts actually exist and that observers can agree on them. That observers have the freedom to make whatever observations they want. The choices one observer makes do not influence the choices other observers make. Physicists call this locality. The idea of objective reality relies on these three assumptions. Agreeable reality, freedom of choice, locality. If objective reality is, well, real, then these assumptions must all hold. But this experiment proves that one or more of these assumptions must be wrong. These results suggest that objective reality does not exist. Now just think about the implications of this in regards to science. The scientific method relies on established facts acquired by repeated measurements and agreed upon universally and independently of those who observe them. Yet here we are, with fundamentally contradictory results that potentially undermine this very idea. This is why quantum physics is such a fascinating field of study. It's typically made up of difficult to initially conceive and conceptualize ideas, but also has the potential to completely upend everything we know as humans. So what's next for testing objective reality? Well, scientists will have to construct experiments that create increasingly bizarre alternative realities that cannot be reconciled. How and when will this happen? Well, that's the fun part of science. It's anyone's guess. I'm just a layman in regards to all of this, but one direction scientists could look to is the Mandela Effect. Questioning the nature of objective reality was once laughed at as nothing more than a silly thought experiment. But here we are, evidence to support that everything isn't as it seems. The Mandela Effect is regarded by many out there as a silly concept that has been ridiculed as nothing more than people having false memories. But what if that isn't correct? What if it's more than that? There has only been one study that has looked into the Mandela Effect, and it came to the conclusion that these memories people have are real, but where they're coming from, and how so many people share such similar memories, well, no one knows for certain. It's a goldmine of potential new scientific discoveries, and I think instead of being ridiculed, it needs to be looked into. The Wigner's friend hypothesis reminds me of the famous double-slit experiment, because both suggest consciousness plays an important role in reality, and as such, both would help to support the concept of the Mandela Effect. Here is how the double-slit experiment and the Wagner's friend hypothesis are related in this manner. In the double-slit experiment, it is observed that the behavior of a particle changes depending on whether or not it is being observed, which is honestly terrifying. A particle doing something different when it's being watched versus when it isn't? Uh, what? In the same way, the Wigner's friend hypothesis suggests that the act of measurement changes the observer's perception of reality, and thus creates a different reality of the system being observed. Put simply, both of these ideas suggest that consciousness plays a role in the behavior of matter at the quantum level. Meaning, if things change when we aren't looking, and reality isn't actually objective, the Mandela Effect isn't such a crazy idea after all. And to take things further, could our reality be in a quantum state where multiple versions of the past and present exist at once? The Mandela Effect might be a glimpse into these strange and hard to understand quantum fluctuations, where different possibilities converge in and out of reality, causing people to experience different versions of reality. It's a theory that borders on the incomprehensible, but aligns with some of the most cutting edge ideas in modern physics. Does this mean quantum theory caused the Mandela Effect? Let me hear your thoughts below and look forward to the next exciting episode, where I'll tackle yet another possible explanation for what caused the Mandela Effect.